Phil. What? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. 25 years ago, you played a concert in front of the entire world. One month ago, you played in Barso, California for 40 people, most of whom were there for $2 taco night. Bill and Ted, what have you got to say for yourselves? Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Before I get started today, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button like it's an evil robot from the future attempting to replace you. And please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Bill and Ted face the music. I'm a little late getting to this one, but it's something that I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey were two very integral movies in my childhood, and I have so much love for them even to this day. To be clear, both of them would definitely get excellent ratings in my new rating system. They are that important to me, and I think they deserve it for being a unique franchise alone. It feels appropriate to be reviewing this movie at the start of 2021, because it's a movie essentially about about not fulfilling your destiny and the lengths you are willing to go in order to do that. I know I've had that feeling and I'm sure a lot of you have had it too. Just that feeling that you're supposed to do something important but you're not quite sure how to accomplish it. I think that's why Bill and Ted resonates with me the way that it does. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. It's a ridiculous story, but there's still something very relatable about it. That's why when we catch up with Bill and Ted in this movie and they still haven't written that song that's supposed to change the world, you really feel for them because you see what it's done to their lives to not accomplish that. I thought it might be weird to see Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves portray these characters at their advanced age, but it wasn't at all, and I truly believe they were born to play these characters, and it was a joy to see them back. They also introduced in this entry their daughters, Billy and Thea, and both of them have kind of taken up with their father's slacker ways. I thought these two characters were really cool extensions of the Bill and Ted characters. They went so far as to have the mannerisms and speech patterns down, it was just really well done. To me, they are welcomed additions to this story. The fact that Bill and Ted haven't accomplished what they were supposed to, it's starting to have consequences. And the future kind of turns on Bill and Ted as time and reality start to collapse because of their failures as songwriters. It even gets to the point where the future leaders feel like it's just a better option to kill Bill and Ted altogether. Execute them. Bogus. So Bill and Ted are on the clock essentially throughout the course of this movie and their plan is to visit future versions of themselves and try to steal the song from a version of themselves that have already written it. It doesn't really work out how they planned, and most of their future selves are dicks. They do have this cool moment of self-realization when they meet older versions of themselves on their deathbed, which is not something you'd expect from these type of characters, but it was a really well done moment, I thought. While they're doing all that, their daughters come up with a plan to help them write this song. So their idea is to collect all these historical music figures to basically build a super band to help them. It's kind of interesting how their first journey kind of mimics Bill and Ted's first journey. I will say that the thing I like most about the first two movies is that they are very different. One is a time travel movie and one is about the afterlife. So I was kind of hoping that the third entry would do the same thing and come up with a completely different situation for them to deal with. Instead, this movie does kind of feel like a combination of the first two movies at times. Which is fine, but I guess I just wanted something a little bit more. The absence of George Carlin as Rufus is definitely felt in this movie. He was the conscience of the Bill and Ted movies. He was an integral part of guiding them through their adventures. Greetings, my excellent friend. He is missed, but there is a cool little tribute to him early in the film that I thought was really well done. It was great to see William Sadler back as Death from Bogus Journey. No way! Yes way. He was arguably the surprised breakout character of the series. It's kind of interesting that his story in the movie actually reflects that, whereas he was part of the band at first and then he kind of gets a big head and goes solo. And this causes a rift between him and Bill and Ted. The daughters prove to be the voice of reason and eventually bring them all back together, which I think was kind of foreshadowing what happens later in the movie. Couple of quick notes, Keanu does do an English accent in this movie and it's considerably better than the one he does in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Let them go. Our work is finished here. Hers has just begun. 
Because let's be honest, that's one of the worst accents in movie history. We get to see a little bit more of Hell this time, and I have to admit, Bogus Journey was always one of my favorite cinematic interpretations of Hell. The killer robot from the future who kind of learns the error of his ways feels like it belongs in this universe. Plus, I really like the added wrinkle of Missy marrying Ted's little brother, Deacon. What number are we thinking of? 69, dudes! It was such a nice touch, and it really connected it with the other two movies. And then we come to the plot twist, which I'm sure some people might take issue with. Basically, what it comes down to is that this prophecy that they've dedicated their lives to fulfilling was kind of misread. It turns out that their daughters were actually the ones who are needed to unite the universe through music. Some may have a knee-jerk reaction to this and insist that it's woke, but I don't see it that way at all. Bill and Ted did create Billy and Thea, so technically their creations did unite the universe. <laughs> it's just that they don't create the song that we were told that they should or would. Essentially, they were kept together by Rufus, so their daughters would be together later in life. They also come to realize that it's not so much the song that they need to write, it's more about just uniting people through music. So they use the phone booth to create infinite copies of themselves, and they go around handing out musical instruments to all these different people throughout history and reality. And all these people played the same song at the same time, with Billy and Thea producing it. And to be fair, Bill and Ted do lead the band on guitar, and their destiny is fulfilled. So essentially, Bill and Ted just needed a little bit of guidance from their more resourceful offspring. They've always been characters who needed a little bit of guidance, so this is really no different. Overall, I enjoyed Bill and Ted Face the Music. I think it's necessary viewing for any Bill and Ted fan, and I'm sure most of you have seen it already anyway. I thought it completed their story in a pretty satisfying manner. I would have preferred if it didn't rehash the first two movies so much with the time travel and afterlife thing. So for that reason, I'm not fully prepared to give it the excellent rating, which is kind of weird because obviously that rating was inspired by Bill and Ted themselves. But I am going to give it the Please Palpatine rating and I 100% have already purchased it on Blu-ray. So did you see Bill and Ted face the music? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. As always, thanks for watching, and most importantly, be excellent to each other. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Right on.